and welcome back to another video. Appreciate you guys being here on this Saturday, beautiful Saturday morning. And we are going to have this conversation. What would I do right now with $10,000? Guys, let me know that you can hear me okay. Give me a thumbs up as you come into the room today, this morning, guys. Appreciate you being here. And uh, just let me know that you can hear me okay. I'm in <clears throat> several spots. So if you're on, if you're not on YouTube, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you're on YouTube, you have we have a description box below. We got all kind of stuff down there in the description box. But all, but let me know wherever you're at, guys. Whether you're <clears throat> checking in on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever you are, let me know where you are coming in from. What city and what state or what country? Maybe you're in a different country, right? Maybe you're in Argentina. Argentine, or maybe you're in uh, uh, Trinidad, Tobago, or maybe you're in South Africa, UK. Doesn't matter where you are. Let me know where you are and that you can hear me. Thanks for the thumbs up. I appreciate you guys that are already chiming in with a thumbs up and can hear me okay. Uh, let's see here. Chris, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, Philly Suburbs, I said that. Victor's here. Jay's here. Uh, Jay's in Martinsburg, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Okay, fantastic. Victor's in Long Beach. And uh, Nico is in Spain. We got San Francisco in the house. Quite a few places, guys, from all over the world, in various parts of the world. So glad that you're here. So glad that you joined me on Saturday morning. I appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Because you could have been in a lot of different places, guys. But I appreciate you picking this place to be, to have this conversation about what would I do? What would I do if I had $10,000 extra so to speak extra right because i want to look at several different scenarios because everybody is a little different everybody's situation is a little bit different right so just because one person is in a situation to do this with ten thousand dollars doesn't mean somebody else is not in that exact same situation and maybe can't do that with ten thousand but can do this with ten thousand right so Let's have this conversation from various different aspects, various ver uh, different perspectives, right? One perspective, I might go over two or three different perspectives. One perspective might be the person who has no savings, hasn't done, do doesn't have any uh, real, you know, background of investing, doesn't know what to do, just came into $10,000 for some reason. Maybe it was insurance money. Maybe it was some big bonus something. They just came into the money, but they don't have any foundation with personal finances. That could be one person. Another person could be, you know what? Hey, I don't have any debt or anything like that, you know, but I've never really invested before. So what do I do? How do I, what do I, I came into this $10,000. What do I do? I don't, not sure what to do. And then another scenario could be, hey, a person who is very, very seasoned already has a ton of investments has an extra $10,000 just kind of laying around, what would they do? So, and, and the reason I want to bring it to you guys like in scenarios is because personal finance is personal. A lot of times we give these one size fits all uh, type of su uh, suggestions or type of remedies. And it's not a one size fit, fits all type of thing when it comes to money quite often. Now we know there's some basics with money, right? Some things you should do and shouldn't do. We, we talk about the fact that you shouldn't buy depreciating, you shouldn't take money and go buy things that go down in value. You should take money and buy things that go up in value so you can build wealth, right? We, we talk about that. We talk about the importance of doing a budget. We talk about the importance. So some things are basic and you should do to lay the foundation for your money, right? To have a strong financial foundation. But there are a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different scenarios that all depends on your personal situation, because personal finance is personal. It's not a one size fits all thing. And that's one thing that too many money people on the internet, they never give, they give the short five minute version of the video, but they never come along and say, you know what, but if you're in this situation, perhaps you want to think about this. It's all one size fits all and money is not one size fits all, right? Uh, Mia, check it in from, uh, I think she said Atlanta. We got, uh, yeah, Mia from Atlanta. We got, uh, thanks for the thumbs up. Arizona's in the house. LD Sims, good to have you from San Antonio. Uh, really enjoyed the Im immigration video. Thank you so much, LD Sims. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't think YouTube liked it too much <laughs> because it didn't get too many views, but 
That was a really important live I did, I think, Thursday, a couple of days ago about immigration, how it could affect us and all that. If you, if you didn't check it out, feel free to go over and look at it. It's down in, the, uh, in my list of uh, videos, my latest video. Central Pennsylvania is in the house. Wow, there's not a lot of big cities in central Pennsylvania. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, good to have you, Delinda. Kimmy, good to have you. Also from San Antonio. So Kimmy and LD Sims. Seattle's in the house. Venice Beach, Florida, Venice Beach, California. Isn't that where the guys are working out outside all day long? Yeah. Salute back to you, Jay Samuels. Tony, good to have you. Plainfield, I think that's New Jersey, right, Tony? Good afternoon, all. Sunset in the ocean. Yeah, we got some great folks here from all over the country and all over the world. Uh, thank you for the heads up or the, for the thumbs up, uh, GLS. <clears throat> Four minute behind at X75 speed. Is that me or is that you, uh, FWBRC? Walton Beach, Florida. Atlanta, Arkansas, Pennsylvania again. <clears throat> hey, Tamika, good to have you. Columbus, Ohio. We're all over the country, all over the country. And we got some folks, I'm sure, that are international. So thank you so much for joining me. We're going to have this conversation, but I'm going to have it to you in different scenarios, right? And if you have a question, put a Q in the chat, and I possibly, hopefully, will get to it without not seeing it. Melbourne, Florida is here. Thanks for all the information. Thanks, Thank you back, Jimmy, for being a supporter. North Hills, California. Not sure where North Hills, California is. So a couple housekeeping things real quick before I dive deep into it. <clears throat> we got mobile, uh, Mint Mobile. If you haven't logged in to Mint Mobile and got, a, got yourself on a Mint Mobile premium wireless uh, plan, you can save money. That's the only reason I talk about them because their plans are super inexpensive and they're good, right? Uh, but you can save some money on your wireless plan for sure. I'm a fan of StreamYard. We're using StreamYard right now. Uh, StreamYard, literally, this is no joke. <clears throat> StreamYard is about the easy, if you want to do a YouTube channel and you're thinking about doing a live feed, StreamYard is incredibly, it's like a fourth grader could use StreamYard because it's really super simple. I mean, very simple. Um, uh, don't forget, guys, as you come in, hit the like button for me. Just hit the thumbs up button for me so uh, uh, we can make sure that registers with YouTube. Uh, and again, there's free stuff in, this, uh, in the description box. Let's jump in. We got three scenarios I think I'm going to go over. We got the struggle bus person who's always struggling and they just ran into $10,000, right? So I'm going to tell you what I would do if I was that person and I just found $10,000 somewhere. I just came up with $10,000. Or... I just won $10,000 at the casino or something. I don't know what it is, right? And I'm going to talk to you about the doing okay person. You know, I'm doing okay, but I'm a new investor. Don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I am I got this $10,000. I don't have a whole lot of debt or anything like that. I'm not sure what to do. I'm going to tell you what I would do in that scenario. And then we got the big baller shot caller, right? Who is seasoned, know what they got hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the, in the, in the uh, you know, lots of cash, $40,000 worth of cash. $500,000 worth of investments already, and they got an extra $10,000, right? So I'm going to give you kind of all three of those scenarios as we jump in, guys. And feel free again, drop a Q, Q, I could get really get out. Drop a Q in the chat if you have a question, please, please. All right, let's jump into it. Number one, first scenario is the person that is brand new, have no money saved, have no debt. I mean, sorry, have, have a lot of debt. You know, maybe student loans, credit cards, uh, automobile, the car is old, just living paycheck to paycheck, trying to make it out in this world, right? The person who's struggling financially, maybe not super struggling, but just don't quite have it all together out here financially. What about that person? What should they do or what I would do if I was in that scenario, right? This is the person that doesn't have investments, has no investments and is just now trying to get started. They started watching these videos and you know they're, they're making maybe 15, 20, 25 dollars an hour. And in America, 15 dollars an hour is not a lot, right? If, if you're if you're in America, it's not a ton, right? So what would what would I do if I was that person? Right? Let's see. Somebody said I would eat more Greek salads for health. Okay. Bitcoin. <clears throat> All right. So what I would do is the, the first thing I would think about is on your job. Well, let me, let me back up. The first thing I would think about is I would consider a plan to increase my income. 
And let me make let me make sure I'm clear with that. Here's what I mean. If you're a person that's on the struggle bus, don't have any money, no money saved, right? Bunch of debt, living paycheck to paycheck, struggling week to week to make ends meet. You have got to first ask yourself a very, very serious question before you do anything, before you even think about what to do with the money, $10,000. You need to ask yourself a serious, serious question. Look yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, self, what do I need to do to make sure that in three to five years, I'm not in this exact same situation? That's the first thing you got to do. Before you think about spending $10,000, you got to figure out how can you make sure that in three to five years, you are not in the scenario that you are currently in with no money, a bunch of debt, old car, living paycheck to paycheck. You got to figure out the real deal. What do I do to make sure that I'm not living like this in the future? You cannot even consider doing anything with $10,000 until you shore up the fact, create some type of life plan for you to make sure you're not in this same scenario in a few years from now. You, that's the first thing you got to think about. How do I get out of this hole I've dug myself in? Here's what that probably looks like, and this is what you may want to consider doing first with the $10,000. The first thing you got to do with the $10,000 is not save an emergency fund, is not pay off debt, is not go get a new car. None of that. The first thing you got to do with the $10,000 is think about how you can increase your skills. You got to get more skills. You cannot be sitting around just chilling. You got an extra $10,000. You're living paycheck to paycheck and you want to go invest that money. No, don't invest the money. Whatever you do, please. Right? If you're in the if you're on the struggle bus, you got to come up with a plan to not be on the struggle bus. That usually looks like either more education, a trade, a skill. You got to spend some of that money, at least some of that money, maybe even all that money, making sure that down. Listen, people that have money, they look towards the future. People that have money, they, they think about what's going to happen in three years. What's going to happen in two years? What's going to happen in five, 10, 15 years? They're looking, they have, they're able to see a vision. Same thing, let me give you another scenario. People that are successful in general, in life, not just with money, in life. People that are successful in life, they're looking down the road. They're not looking at the today, the tomorrow, the next weekend. They're not looking at you know, the concert next month, right? They're not looking at any, they're looking at where am I going to be in five years? This is what a successful people do. This is why when you're 20 years old, 19 years old, the people that are telling you what to do to get better and have a good life, they see down the road for you. That's why they're the adults that come and come to you at 16, 17, 18, 19. The reason they tell you what to do is because they see down the road for you. And when we're young, we don't see it, right? We can only see right in front of us. And so just like the people who have no money, right? When they don't have any money, they only see what's right in front of them. They don't see down the road. And I'm telling you, the first thing you got to do, if you have no money, you have to put a plan in place for you to get some higher skills. I don't know what that higher skills looks like. Could be a certification. Could be, like I said, maybe you want to be a plumber. Maybe you want to be an auto mechanic. Maybe you you got to put some money, put that money towards getting that cert certification, getting that trade, getting that college degree, getting that PhD, whatever it is. You got to make sure that you are not in the same place down the road, period. That's the first thing you got to do if you don't have any if you don't have nothing and you fall into ten thousand dollars, right? No, that's the first thing. It's not about emergency. You know, emergency emergency fund. We'll get there. We'll get to it, right? 
401k, we'll get to it, right? But you got to make sure you put that money towards getting you some skills. Because what people always say, you know, it costs money to go and get skills. It costs money to get a cybersecurity certification, right? It costs money to be a web developer, data an data an analyst, right? To be to get a say a good sales job. Listen, yes, it costs money. That's why you take your ten thousand dollars and put it towards making sure you you won't be in the same scenario. Education first. Thank you, Al. Education first. And why? Not because you just want to get smarter, but because you want to make sure you're not in the same scenario down the road. Very important. So to me, for me, in my opinion, if I don't have anything, living paycheck to paycheck, low skills, not making much money, what I would do with 10K is make sure that in three years I'm not I'm not in the same situation. I'm going to get, I'm going to buy me some higher skills. Right now, let's move past that in the same scenario. Let's say you do have some skills, right? Let's say you was like me. You got a college degree, but you were still broke. Right. And you have some skills. If that's you, I want you to think about a few things. All right. First thing is this. Do you have do you have a 401k at your current job? Right. Make sure you're getting the match to the 401k. Right. I know you got 10K sitting over there. I'm, I'm not going to ask you to put your 10K into your 401K match. Right. Because you really can't do that. You got to contribute to a 401K with money from your job. Right. But you can think about, OK, start thinking about your scenario. Remember, this is for this is scenario number one. This is the person who has nothing. Starting from scratch. Zero. No skills. Or I mean, I mean, they have some skills, but no money. Living paycheck to paycheck, right? Consider making sure you're getting your match on your job. I don't want you to ever quit doing that. Always get the match. But again, you want the next thing you want to think about is pay off some high interest, high interest debt with the $10,000. Maybe you have a car that you owe money on. Maybe you have a car with a 6, 7, 8, 9% interest rate, right? Maybe you have a, a credit card or something like that that you owe 5,000, 8,000, 15,000. You need to pay off the high interest debt, pay off the high interest debt, right? If you own a home and you're in this scenario and your home is at a 3% rate, maybe you don't go straight towards paying off the home, right? But if it's high interest rate it's on, you know, med maybe it's, maybe it's not medical bills, maybe it's student loans. It's a six or seven, 8% interest, whatever it may be. You want to consider paying off that debt with the $10,000, now, maybe you say, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, but I really don't have a whole lot of debt. You need to think about taking the $10,000 and building some type of emergency fund. Maybe open yourself up a high yield savings account online where you can get three or 4% right now, 5% right now. And you can put that money there while you think about what you want to do, while you come up with your plan to get more money or get more income, or you think about your, your plan to pay off high interest debt, maybe the debt snowball method. But use that, put that high yield savings account together, drop that 10K in there. And maybe if you don't have an emergency fund, maybe you just put that money, you don't have debt. Maybe you put that money towards your emergency fund, right? But I think the high, I think the high interest debt, I think at least a couple of thousand dollars towards an emergency fund and I, to get started on the emergency fund, right? To at least have something. And then maybe the $8,000 to pay off the high interest credit card debt, right? <clears throat> or maybe or high interest, you know, uh, car debt, right? And then I want you to also think about perhaps starting to max out a Roth IRA, right? A Roth, a Roth IRA. Uh, what's the limitations on a Roth IRA right now? Um, Roth IRA limits seven thousand dollars. Is that right? <clears throat> yeah, I think. If you're under 50, it's $7,000. And I think it's 8,000 if you're over 50 for catch up. <clears throat> so maybe if you <clears throat> don't have a lot of debt, don't have a whole bunch of high interest debt, you already have a little bit of money, a couple thousand dollars in your emergency fund, but you're still new. You're not quite sure you <clears throat> what to do. You're living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you can consider putting $7,000 of that money towards a Roth IRA, all right? And then from here on out, could still contribute to a Roth IRA every single year, right? Now you're on some type of investment program, right? Just a thought. 
Bronx is in the house. O'Brien, good to have you. Um, give a okay. Here's a, here's other thing I want to say. Give a portion of the money. I don't care what portion of it. I don't care if it's a little bit, a lot. Maybe it's maybe you only give a hundred bucks of your ten thousand, whatever it is. Consider I'm a listen. I talk about this a lot on this channel. Here on here on Smart Money Bro on YouTube, we talk a lot about the importance of the principle of giving, even if it's just a small amount and you're giving with the right heart. I really strongly believe in the principle of giving. So please consider, even if you have nothing, right? See, giving doesn't matter if you have a lot to give or you have a little to give. It doesn't, giving doesn't care about that, right? Doesn't care if you you are, you got thousands, hundreds of thousands, or if you don't have nothing. Just give something, right? Uh, uh, give what you can afford to give, or you want give what you what your heart leads you to give. But give something. Help somebody out. Go volunteer. Give some money to the local food shelter. Give your money to a local uh, homeless shelter. Give your money to a low. Give some money to a local domestic violence shelter. Give some money to a church. Give some money to the people that in the world that are less fortunate. Give a little small portion of it. In every scenario we talk about, I'm gonna I'm gonna impress upon you the idea of giving a little bit of your money to help other people out. I know it's not a very common thing to talk about nowadays. I know it's not very popular, but it's a very very important principle of life, right? So that's the sort of that's some of the ways things I would do if I had no money, if I was totally totally broke. Right. If you have debt, but you don't have any emergency money. Right. I would focus my 10K on those two things, debt and emergency money, and maybe doing a little bit given, like I said earlier, but debt and emergency money. Right. Like I said, maybe two thousand dollars into a high yield savings account for a small starter emergency and take the rest and pay down that that high interest debt. Right. And again, if you don't have debt, I would put it towards my emergency fund. Maybe you build out your emergency fund fully, right? Three to six months of your of your emergency savings. If I have money in savings, I already got 10 grand, 20 grand in savings, but I have debt, then I would just focus on the debt. But before I do anything, I'm going to make sure that if I don't have enough skills, <clears throat> I'm going to pay on trying to get some more skills. I'm going to get that certification. I'm going to get that I'm going to get the schooling, the certification, whatever it takes to make sure that I'm not in the same scenario. If I don't have no money, one of the last things I'm going to do is go invest the money. Yeah, you heard me say that right. That's one of the last things I'm going to do. But the first things are emergency money, paying off high interest debt, and getting some type of schooling or whatever it takes to get higher skills. I wouldn't worry too much about trying to grow money when I ain't even got money to pay my bills, when I don't even have money and I have a whole bunch of debt. Because listen, if you have $10,000 cash in a high yield savings account, but you have $10,000 debt, here's my question. Do you really have $10,000 in a high yield savings account? In a savings account? If you have $10,000 of high interest debt, not really, right? You're just fooling yourself. If you say, yeah, I got $10,000 worth of Tesla, but I owe $10,000 on my on my, my, my 2015 uh, Honda. You ain't really got the $10,000 in the high yield savings account, or I'm sorry, in, in Tesla, because you owe $10,000. Your net worth is still zero. See what I'm saying? So I like to say, let's take care of the foundation of the house. The foundation of the financial house is making sure you have some money in case something goes wrong. And the foundation of the house is making sure you have high, high paying skills. And the foundation of the financial house is making sure you don't have a whole bunch of high interest debt hanging around your neck. That's taking care of the foundation. If you're in scenario one, like we're talking about, you ain't even got a good, strong foundation. So why are you trying to fix up the beautiful windows and put beautiful lighting in the house when the foundation is shot? Get the foundation of your money together first, 
then you can go play and get beautiful lighting in the house and beautiful, uh, you know, uh, beautiful refrigerator in the house. You got to go in to buy, get $10,000 in Tesla is taking and putting $10,000 into a shady house or a house that's on shady ground. Don't do it. So that's why this scenario is a little different than the other scenarios. This scenario says take care of business first, four walls first, right? Four walls first. Tulsa, Oklahoma, good to have you, Curtis, good to have you, Bucharest, Romania, good to have you, Marius, good to have you, thank you so much for being here, Marius, um, let's see, if you got a question, guys, drop a cue, and I'll go back and get to the question as, as good as I can, guys, let's see here, uh, I'm gonna go to scenario number two, scenario number two, yeah, I'm a big Vanguard person too, but I'm thinking about opening up a opening up a Fidelity account as well. Let's go to number two. Scenario number two: What I would do with ten grand, ten grand. Now, the first scenario: That's the person who's on the struggle bus, right? And it's nothing shameful about being on the struggle bus. We all been there, right? But now let's talk about scenario two. And scenario two with ten thousand dollars: This is the person who already has some money saved already basically almost debt-free or debt-free. And for some reason, they're new. They don't, They never had. They just live pretty frugal. They're pretty relaxed with their money. You know, they're not all out there in, their, in the rat race trying to look good. They just have an extra $10,000. Maybe they got a bonus. Maybe the spouse got the bonus. But they already have money saved. They got a little emergency fund. You'd be surprised at the amount of people that have $10,000, $15,000 already in their savings, right? Not, not, a lot of people do that, right? But this person in scenario two, they're pretty much debt-free for the most part, right? And they just, they're just they not real savvy investors. They don't know much about investing. They got a 401k at the job, but you know they contribute a little bit of money to 5, 10, 15%. But they want to start investing for the first time, right? Maybe this is you who... You got 10 grand and you don't, you don't have, you got your foundation together, right? Your house, you know, you, your house, your business, your personal finances is pretty much together, right? You just don't have a lot of investing experience. Scenario two, you got a pretty good paying job. You don't have to worry about higher paying skills. You make, you know, pretty, pretty good money and you make plenty of money to pay all your bills and all that. You're not really living paycheck to paycheck. Let's talk about what I would do with that $10,000 if I was that person. If I was that person. First thing I would consider doing is writing out a plan for this money, right? C considering some type of investment strategy with this money. Consider what your age is. Consider what your goals are. Consider what your risk tolerance level may be, <clears throat> right? Consider... Um, how you, are you risky? Are you want to risk, risk a little bit with this money? Do you want to be real stable with this money? Right? Because if you want to be real stable with this money, you want to make sure it grows and you get back to it in five years. You know, maybe you should think about a CD. Ooh, this guy that talks about money actually talked about a CD. Listen, everybody's not 28 years old or 38 years old wanting to grow money. Some people just want to make sure the money is there in five years, plus a little interest, right? Because maybe in five years, they're thinking about retiring, or maybe they're thinking about getting another car, or maybe they're thinking about something like that. And they don't, they don't want to take a lot of risk. Everybody is different with money. That's why I got to give you these different scenarios. Everybody's not the same. And we have to understand that as people that deal with people with money and we talk to people personally about their money, we got to understand that everybody is not the same. Some people fall into $10,000 at the age of 65 years old and they don't want to risk the money by throwing it into the market or throwing it into Bitcoin, right? They want this money to be there in five years for them and if they don't make it, for their children this $10,000. So for some people, they want to be safe with it. That's why you have to understand that there's safe options out there. Not just a high yield savings account, but maybe there's CDs. Maybe there's money markets. They're not returning, but two, 3%. Maybe there's some bonds, right? Some US treasuries, some three-year, five-year. 
They're not returning but 2%, 3%, but there's different risk tolerance levels out there, right? But right out, if this is you in scenario two, right, you got an extra 10K and you're not real investing savvy, maybe you're a little older, right? And you, Or maybe you just want to be less risky with this money. Maybe you're 35 years old, you already got your investments and you got your 401k that's doing pretty well, but you got 10k and you want to make sure you want to be less risky with this 10k. Right? Figure out what you're comfortable with. Do you want to risk it? Do you not want to risk it? Right? Do you do you what is your end goal with the money? Think about that too. The very first thing that's going to drive what you should do with the money is what is your goal? with the money? What do you plan or want to achieve with the money? Do you want the money to go from 10,000 this year to 50,000 in 10 years? Do you want the money to go from 10,000 this year to 13,000 in about five years so you can get you another car, cash, right? Then I want you to think about what do you know about in terms of investments, right? Do you know about index funds? Do you know about ETFs? Right. Do you here's another question you got to ask yourself. Do you want to be hands on with the money or do you want to be hands off with the money? Right. Right. So these are all the things that you should be thinking about if you run into ten thousand dollars and you are the type of person who is not real investing savvy. Right. You're not real savvy. But, you know, you want to grow a little bit of money. Right. But you got to consider all these different types of things before you make a move with the money. Right. Do you <clears throat> listen? Do you love individual stocks, but you never had a chance to really have the money to invest in individual stocks? You already have an emergency fund. You already have very little, if no debt. And you, you're not a real seasoned investor. What I, would I, what I suggest to anybody who's not a real seasoned investor is I suggest that th that person consider ETFs and index funds over individual stocks. But who am I to say? Who am I to say? Let me explain what I mean. I This is my opinion. It's not gospel, Right. This is my opinion on what you should do. Maybe you're in this scenario too here where you don't really have a lot of investments, but you, you don't have no debt. Your, 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 your household foundation with personal finances is together. Maybe you're the person that says, you know what? I want to dig deep into investing in individual stocks. I want to pick stocks on a regular basis. I want to learn to do that. Boom. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Take about, take about a, a portion of your $10,000, learn, learn, learn how to trade individual stocks, how to read the stock market, how to uh, uh, um, uh, it, uh, analyze 10Ks and 10Qs and profit loss statements and earnings reports from each individual company and go for it, right? That's something you really want to do. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with individual stocks, right? But if you don't want to be hands on like that and all in the mix and weeds, hey, ETFs and index funds, perfect for hands off investing. You just buy a bucket of stocks. That's it. Right now, here's what here's the other thing I want you to do. Think about. You don't really have to dollar cost average with the ten thousand dollars if you don't want to. Right. In other words, drop the ten thousand dollars in a high yield savings account and then slowly drip the money out into an ETF or drip the money out into an index fund, right? I mean, you could do that. You could say that I'm going to put $10,000 in a high yield savings account and I'm going to set it up with Vanguard or Fidelity or Charles, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, whatever. I'm going to set it up where once a month on the 15th of every month, $500 comes out of that and goes right into whatever investment I choose on that investment platform. You could do that, right? Or you could just take the $10,000 and just invest in the things you want to, right? I, I always suggest that you take the $10,000 and just invest in what you do. But if you want to drip it out of a high HYSA, cool. The kicker is because you have your foundation together with money already, you don't have, in, in scenario two here, you don't have a lot of debt. You don't have a lot of uh, high interest debt, right? You don't have, you ha already have your emergency fund. 
because you already have your house together in terms of personal finances, you have more choices. That's the beauty of scenario two. You got choices. If you're in, back in scenario one, living paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, you ain't got no emergency fund. You don't have no investments. You got a bunch of debt. You don't have many choices with this 10, 10, 10 K, right? Y your choices are more limited. Scenario two, your choices are more, right? Again, in scenario two, just like scenario one, I would go ahead and give a small portion of my $10,000. Again, this theme of giving is going to go through everything I talk about because I strongly believe it's important. But since we're in scenario two and you may be investing the money because you got your financial house together, don't forget the basics of investing. Okay. Don't forget the basics of investing, the rules of investing that don't change no matter who you are. There's rules of investing that are the same that do not change. That They were true 75 years ago. They are true today, right? Not, I'm going to give them to you. Not in any particular order, though, right? Not in any particular order. I'm going to give you the seven rules of investing your money that you want to know. Let's see. Go back to the chat real quick. All right, let's see. L LA, check it in. Good to have you here. Uh, always invest in yourself, somebody said. Absolutely. Commission sales is paycheck to paycheck. It's tough to do. I bet it is. I bet it is. Real tough to do, right? It's risky, right? Let's see here. I use Merrill, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tamika said I would just do VU, VO, or SPY for the conservative side. Yep. We'll, t we'll, get, we'll dig more into that, Tamika, here in a bit. Thanks for bringing that up. I think that 10K, you will need an emergency fund like a 2K. Yep, that's what I said earlier. Or maybe you just buy a business that you can grow, perhaps. Yeah, 10K on a business. Okay, maybe the price of gold, somebody said. So Zach did. Let's see. Uh, let's see. ETF versus mutual funds versus ETF with a growth. Yeah, we'll talk about that, Tamika. We'll get there. Hey, Blue Skies in the house. Miss V is here. Good to have you, Miss V. I think you check in from Seattle, right? Good morning. Great information. You're right about having your goals and money. Yep. Just reading through the chat a little bit, guys. Grant Cardone says, don't take financial advice from a millionaire. Can you believe that, dude? He said, only listen to a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not. I don't I don't follow people like him. Uh, let's see. Investing in REIT. Investing in REIT, in particular data center REITs. Do your research. Yeah. OK, nothing wrong with that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's a good point. Tamika said there's free classes for uh, how to read 10Ks and 10Qs. Um, what 10Ks and 10Qs are, those are the earnings, earnings reports from, from companies, right? Quarterlies and so forth. Let's see, blue chip companies like Ar Aristocrat King and Aristocrat Dividend Stocks. They pay dividends on a drip. Yep. Curtis Ball, good information. DCA has been a go-to investment technique. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with dollar cost averaging, Curtis Ball. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, let's see. Somebody says something with Grant Cardone does, doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't follow uh, people like that. Right. Uh, I, I don't listen to people like that. I know a lot of people do, but yeah, you got to be very careful about people that tell you things you like. Uh, don't 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 ever buy a house. But they own a bunch of houses. You know, you know, you know just be careful. Right. Snowball versus avalanche. Don't forget the basics. Let's talk about the basics. Uh, let's see here. South Carolina. Check it in. Kwame. Good to have you. Um Excellent. I said from LinkedIn, thanks for checking in. Excellent monthly dividends. Yes, yes, yes. Dividends, dividends, dividends. Always, I always like to reinvest dividends. We'll talk about it. Let's go to this one. Listen, the basics of investing, the basics, okay? Seven things that don't, cha don't change no matter what scenario you're, you're in, right? They were true years ago. They're true today. You don't have to get fancy with investing, okay? When you get fancy, you increase your chances of messing something up, right? But here's the first one. Always create an investment plan of action. Doesn't matter what the plan is. Doesn't matter what the, what the plan looks like. It's your plan. Create your own plan of action. That's number one. Number two, the basics of investing. Commit to consistency over a long stretch of time. Be consistent, okay? Be consistent. Part of consistency is dollar cost averaging, putting a certain amount into an investment over a long stretch of time, over regular intervals, once a month, once every two weeks, whatever it may be, once a week. 
That's dollar cost averaging into the stock market. So create an investment plan. Be consistent. Number three is only invest in things that you understand. When you have this $10,000 that you want to invest, you can invest in individual stocks, ETFs, index funds, regular mutual funds, REITs, uh, you name it, commodities, whatever, right? Futures, right? Trading, uh, you know, calls and, and puts. and you, you can do all types of things, but just understand the investment. Make sure you understand what you're doing. That means if you don't feel like really getting a thorough understanding and learning, don't invest in it, right? And if you don't understand any of it, then you need to start doing a little research. So you do understand. And then when you start researching and you start learning, see, a big part of investing and being good with money is not just people don't fall out the womb good with money, right? You have to, you have to study. You have to research. You have to actually learn something. You cannot be the type of person, if you want to be good with your money, you cannot be the type of person that says, I don't want to pick up a book or learn anything after I'm 18 years old. I just want to go to work, come home, go to work. And we all know people like that. They just want to go to work, come home, learn what they got to learn at work, just enough, just to be, you know, just to, just to get paid a paycheck and go home. If that's you, building wealth is not in your future. Let's just be honest. I, I don't, I don't want to sugarcoat this thing on this channel. I want to be straightforward and honest with you. If that's your personality and that's who you are and who you're going to be, you ain't building much wealth. Because if you want to build wealth, you've got to start learning a little bit of something, something, right? You have to be a lifelong learner if you want to build some serious wealth. So you have if you don't understand it, that's cool. Start to understand it, whatever you may be interested in. Maybe it's just learning how to evaluate ETFs. Look, go to ETF.com ETF.com. Go there and start learning as much as you can about ETFs. And then you become an intelligent investor, right? And then you start understanding things. And the beauty of investing is the more things you understand, the more diversified your investments can be. Because if you really know and understand REITs, you can add that to your portfolio. If you really know and understand uh, individual stocks, add individual stocks to your portfolio. Because the, the, you, you kind of get a, the more you learn and understand, the more diversification you can have, the more fun it is, the more it, it just so it opens up so much of your world. But that's number three, only invest in what you understand. Number four of the tried and true rules is risk what you can afford to lose, what you can afford to lose. Right. Understand your risk tolerance and invest accordingly. Don't be investing with the rent money. Don't be putting the money that you should be putting towards paying off debt into Bitcoin, right? You don't, listen, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you can't afford to lose 10 grand. So you can't afford to be risky with 10 grand. That's why these different scenarios I'm playing out to you, the first scenario was the person that didn't have anything. The second scenario was the person that didn't have a whole lot, but they didn't have a lot of debt and they had an emergency fund and they had some, you know, they could they could do some things with this ten thousand dollars. They just didn't know a whole lot. But risk what you can afford to lose. Don't be out here gambling in the stock market. Right. You don't have to gamble. There's too much information about it to gamble. It's not a gambling thing. It's too much solid, good, strong information that's out there for you to have and choose from to not make it gambling. You just got to be willing to learn, right? Number four was risk what you can afford to lose. Number five, tried and true rules. These, these seven rules don't change. Number five is this, diversification. Diverse, please don't put all your money into, um, name it, AT&T. Please, I know AT&T is a good steady stock, been around for years, but please don't put all of your money into Broadcom or into Amazon. Don't do it. Spread your money. Diversification is the name of the game. Listen, you may not even want to put all your money into the stock market. You can have some, you can have some of your portfolio in real estate, some of your portfolio in other things, right? 
diversify your investment choices. I'm going to tell you how important that was. In 2022, 2022, the stock market was down. The S&P was down 18% for the year. Year over year, 18% for the total year of the fiscal year or the calendar year of 2023, the S&P was down 18%. But guess what? Real estate was killing the game, right? So I lost money in terms of my net worth in the, in real, in, in, a, in the stock market. But I gained that money back because my real estate went up. So when you have this diversification, you can hedge against downplays in the stock market. You can hedge against downplays in real estate, right? Because you got your money in different places working for you all the time. That's the beauty of diversification. Very important. The sixth thing is, and this is my opinion, is to reinvest dividends. Reinvest di reinvested dividends grow with compound interest the same as regular money that's invested. I always love to reinvest the dividends. I don't need an extra $200 a month coming to me to pay for my bills from my investments or 1000 a month. Now, if you do, that's cool. Again, personal finance is personal. But for me, I like to reinvest the dividends. Reinvested dividends have an amazing compounding effect on your money that's invested in the stock market. Amazing compound. I should show you guys, but everybody here is not on YouTube. Um, I should show you guys an amazing, an amazing, amazing effect on your on your total overall investment when you reinvest the dividends, right? Right. Number seven is don't panic. Don't panic when you're investing. When everybody's panicking, you should be in the, in the market buying. Right now, let's be honest. Right now, let's, let's, let's call it what it is. Right now, guys, the stock market is a little overvalued. It's actually coming down. You see it coming down at the end of last week here. You see it starting to come back down because it was a little bit bloomed up a little bit, right? It's coming back down a little bit now, right? Right. And we may there's all there's a lot of signs that say we may have a significant dip coming up in the stock market. You need to be ready for that dip. When I say ready, if you're in scenario two and you have ten thousand dollars, guess what? You need to be ready in, when, the, when the stock market goes down, because you may want to take that 10K and just go buy ETFs or things that are down index funds, maybe individual stocks that are down in a down market. Buy the dip. You want to purchase the dip. Right. When you go to Dillard's or you go to a store or TJ Maxx, wherever you go, you don't go. Listen, some people go in there looking for the deals. Right. You go. To, how many of you actually go into the uh, uh, a place to shop for, let's say, clothes? And the first rack you go to every single time is the sales rack. Right. The same thing holds true with the stock market. You want to hold your money and see about and put put that 10k in a high yield savings account until the stock market dips and then you go purchase things on sale. Right? And then 3 years later, you know, you're happy. 2 years later, you're happy because you bought these things at a super low price when everybody else was panicking. The deal with in the stock market is you want to buy low, buy low and hold. Now, you may say buy low, sell high. That's cool. That's cool, too. But I like to buy low and hold. But you want to be ready for that. But you cannot be panicked. You have to invest in the stock market with less emotion. Right? Less emotion. But do your research. That's scenario number two. Right? I wanted to go through that one. Now I'm going to go through scenario number three. By the way, when you're investing in the stock market, your goals, right? What's, what's your end game? your age, your risk tolerance, and your other investments that you already have. All those things are things you need to be taken in consideration. Let me run through the chat real quick before I get to the third scenario real quick. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Yes, all the way from Seattle, Miss V said. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. San Francisco's in the house. Frank, good to have you, good to have you here. Uh, to become a web developer or a cybersecurity, whatever, you can try Curse, Corsa, Corsera. No need to spend 10K on that. That's my opinion. Good point. Helpful community channel. Thanks for adding that. Um, somebody said advancement is not for the lazy. Hello. Check the logic right on. You said it. Somebody said uh, Leesville, LA. CJ Holmes. Let's see. I don't know what that means. Uh, Zach said a lot of people think Bitcoin is getting ready to skyrocket. I guess that's what he's saying. 
Blue Sky. Thank you, Blue Sky. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I don't like to diss other people or to talk down on other people, but I'm not a big follower of some of those big gurus you guys follow or some people follow. I'm not a big fan of those people. That we just on different level, a different, different. I don't need to listen to the advice from a billionaire. I'm not really focused on people that want to be billionaires on this channel. I'm focused on the regular people, the 90, the 95 percent of people who just want to get to a million dollar net worth, who just want to have a eight hundred thousand dollar net worth, who want to have a two million dollar net worth in their life sometime. Regular average people who, is I, who, who I talk to. Right. Average people who want to be above average with their money. Let's see here. Uh, somebody said hit him with a reading list. Well, I'll hit him at some point. Crypto is a Ponzi scheme. I don't know. I mean, what what only what you can afford to lose. I'm just going through. If you got a question, put a Q in it, guys. I may not. Uh, yeah, make sure you ch you click the like button on here, guys. Everybody in the chat, do me a small favor. Click the like button for me. Just stop. Pause what you're doing right now. Take two seconds out. Go to that little thumb right there and click it. And if you're watching me on somewhere else, feel free to go over to YouTube and help out the channel and click that thumbs up button for me. I really would appreciate it. Uh, somebody said 10,000 10, QQQ VOO. Let's talk about it with the scenario three. We're going to dig a little deeper into investing, guys. Let's see. I always look for the cheap sales. I know that's right, Zach. So do I. Um, all right. So let's go to number three. Scenario number three is this person. And some of you, because I got a lot of savvy people in this chat, I got some of the smartest viewers on the internet, in my opinion, guys. Got some really bright, sharp people in here. If you are the person, this is scenario three. <clears throat> we did scenario one, no money. Scenario two, uh, no debt, have an emergency fund, but just not a real savvy investor. For scenario number three, this is the person that already has plenty of investments, already has a fully funded emergency fund, already doing pretty well in life, right? Already have investments, various investments, and you fall into $10,000 or you have an extra $10,000 laying around. If you are a seasoned person, like a lot of you are in this chat, and you know how to deal with money. You know how to manage money. And you should be, th and you're, you, you, what you want to do with the $10,000 is first this. Think about your investing goals. And think about how this $10,000, this extra $10,000 can help you reach your investment goals. So this is, this is me. I'm in this, I'm in this scenario three. And I know a lot of you guys are. What I would do with the $10,000 is I would think about how the 10K is going to help me reach whatever my investment goals are. Go back, because if you're in this scenario, scenario three, you probably have your investment goals written or typed out somewhere. Maybe you have a spreadsheet with a tab on there that says goals, or whatever. You're pretty savvy with this thing. You've been doing it for a while. You understand investments. And go check your investment goals, your objectives with your investments. And see how this extra $10,000 can come into play to help you reach those goals. Maybe you have a lot of money already saved up and invest in all that good stuff. You got, you know, $50,000 cash, you know, in the emergency fund. You got three or $400,000 invested, 800, a million, whatever. Maybe you got some grandkids and you haven't fully funded their 529s or their UTMAs or UGMAs, whatever you, whatever you have for them. Maybe that's a goal and this $10,000 can help you reach that goal, right? Think about how this $10,000 can help propel whatever your end goal or objective is with money, right? You're not living paycheck to paycheck. You have plenty of skills that allow you to earn 60, 80, 100, $150,000 a year, whatever it may be. But this 10K can still help you out as well, help you reach a goal, right? How does throwing this $10,000 at it help you reach it? Now, I'm going to suggest this too. If this is you, you still need to give some of the money. No matter what scenario you're in, one, two, or three, you still need to make sure you help other people out, right? Not glamorous, right? It's not IG worthy. I, I'm not going to be in my private jet, right, with, with, that, with that suggestion. But I suggest you take a portion of your money and help other people, some form or fashion. Like I said, tithing, 
giving to a church, giving to less fortunate, giving to the homeless, giving to um, people that need a meal. Go out and buy some coats and take them to the local shelter, right? Whatever it may, I don't care what you do, but you need to find a way to give a portion of the money, no matter what scenario you're in. You're in we're in scenario three here, right? Now, I'm not telling you to give it all away, right? But I'm saying give what you're, what, what you, what you're led to give in your heart, right? Also, if you're in scenario three, maybe you can consider, and this is what I would maybe consider do, doing, perhaps we want to take that 10K to leverage some type of other money to maybe buy some real estate. I talked about real estate briefly earlier, but maybe you don't have any real estate in your portfolio. You're heavy on the stock market stocks and index funds and ETFs and all that good stuff. You got plenty of it, but you haven't ventured out into another area in terms of investing. Maybe you want to get into real estate. How can this $10,000 help you get into? Maybe you have real estate. Maybe the $10,000 can help you improve, do some improvements, right? Some capital improvements of the real estate you already have. Maybe you have a piece of commercial real estate. Maybe you will have to redo the, 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 the driveway, right, of your real estate. Maybe you want to improve your own home to sell your home at some point, right? So the kit, here's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out to you guys on this video is that from scenario one to scenario two to scenario three, the more you got your personal financial life together, the more choices you're going to have with this additional $10,000. Because the person that was living paycheck to paycheck back in scenario one, who didn't have no emergency fund, had a bunch of debt. They don't have a whole lot of choices. They don't, they don't make a lot of money. They, they don't have a lot of high-paying skills. You don't have choices. You got to take this $10,000 and get some higher-paying skills, get your emergency fund together, and pay off some debt. The person who, in the middle, scenario two, they had a few extra choices, right? Because they already have their firm financial uh, house in order. What, when you get to scenario three and you got your firm financial house in order, you understand investing because you have a bunch of investments already. Now you got choices, more choices. Your choices is your freedom, right? Your choices is your freedom with money. You listen, the one thing you got to do is you have to set yourself up. If you're 25 years old watching this, if you're 35 years old watching this, if you're 19 years old watching this, the way to financial freedom is making sure you have choices in life. When you have choices, you got financial freedom. That's the whole point of the FIRE movement, right? Financial independence, retire early. It's to make sure you have choices as soon as possible in life. And it starts by first from forming a firm foundation Using your 10K to form, to get your foundation together. Then you using your 10K to do some other investing. Then using your 10K to really dig into the extra things, the real estate, right? Maybe you want to trade options and you never traded options before. You want to kick it off with 10K. I wouldn't suggest you take it, kick it off with 10K. Maybe 2K, right? Maybe 1K to learn options, right? But the point is this. Maybe you want to dig into some precious metals at this point. You already have, we're in scenario three, you already have $150,000 invested in the market, or you already have $750,000 invested in the market. You already have 50K cash sitting in a high yield savings account. Maybe you want to learn about calls and puts to do some trading or to do some options. Maybe you want to do a little day trading. Maybe you want to get into some precious metals. Maybe you want to buy some gold. These things become more accessible to you and more reasonable to your investment strategy if you're in scenario three. Maybe you want to do some real estate. I'm not telling you to go be, get into precious metals. I'm not telling you to go invest in Bitcoin. I'm telling you that those things become more of a possibility and more of an option for you to look into for a small portion of your money if you're in scenario three, right? And always give the money Give some portion of your money away. But what I would do with 10K 
and I'm in scenario three, and a lot of you guys in here are in scenario three, what I would do in scenario three is I would look towards seeing how scenario, how $10,000 can actually help propel some of my current financial goals, right? I already have a car that's paid for. Maybe I want to go ahead and get a, and, and get another car in about a year or two cash because I buy all cars cash. Then guess what? Maybe I take 9,000 of that 10,000 and I put it to the side in a high yield savings account because I'm saving up for a large ticket item. And I take 1,000 and I go give it and donate it. I go buy a bunch of, I go buy something, a bunch of uh, gloves in the winter time and I give them away. Whatever. Or I give it to my church. Or when I, when I used to sell shoes on eBay, I had an eBay business for several years. When I used to sell shoes on eBay, I would always take a whole big bag of shoes every couple of months to the local uh, domestic violence shelter here in the city I live in to make sure I, no matter what I do, when I do it the last 20 years, 20, 15, 20 years, I always make sure I put a piece in there to make sure I give. That's why I talk about it. So I, maybe I take $9,000 and do that with it or $9,000 and invest or do something, put it to the side, put it in a high yield savings account, and then take a thousand and give it away. Maybe I only give away $500 worth or 2000 whatever it may be. The point is this. I got options when I'm in scenario three. I have options. Let me go back to the chat real quick, guys. Long-term capital gains. I, I didn't go all the way back because I'd be going way back. But let's see here. Just funded my wife and myself IRA. Fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, 13K to allocate. So this chat is very re relevant. Absolutely. My Kadigo. Good. Yes. This is very relevant to a lot of folks in this chat because a lot of folks in this chat are savvy. They have their, their financial foundation together. Excellent. Seminole. Good to have you. Somebody says, I own silver American Eagle coins. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not big on the coins, but... I do know there is uh, uh, some have retained their value. Uh, say choices, options. You're speaking my language. Having limited choices or no choices becomes stressful. Yes, stressful. Um, if I had 10K, I would buy. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know if that scenario, I can't read that. Let's see. Then invest for a better job. Let's see. Question. I'm late to the live, but I have a question. Seminole, that's all right. I've been trying to get into real estate, but I live in South Florida and it's quite expensive. However, I've seen mobile homes are cheaper. Would those be a good start? I am not a fan of investing in your making your first piece of property, mobile homes or tiny homes. Because there's a lot of there's more risk involved with those. You increase your possible your risk with mobile homes. Now, listen. I'm not in every city in the country. Mobile homes where I am, I would not invest in them. I don't know what the mobile home community may look like in South Florida. Perhaps it's a, it's a different type of animal in a good way in South Florida. But I'm, I'm always careful with mobile homes because of, because of the value, the, the retention of value that can happen with mobile homes, at least in the area part of the country that I'm in. So I would say... Yes, yeah, South Florida is probably pretty expensive in that area. But perhaps you're able to make some moves where you can save up some money in the next year or so, year or two, and then get into it in, 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 a, in a certain fashion. But mobile homes, I'd be careful. Just here's what I would suggest you do, Seminole. Start to get into some local landlord associations or real estate associations in South Florida. Start learning a little bit about mobile homes and various types of homes that you can get in for a low price and start connecting yourself with people who already invest in mobile homes down in South Florida in your area specifically. When you connect with them, you're going to learn more. You're going to get more information and you're going to be more better equipped to come up with whether or not you should or shouldn't do it, right? Because you're talking to people, you're having conversations, you're meeting new people. You got to get out the house when you want to invest in real estate. You cannot invest in real estate from your desk. You got to get out the house and not just see properties, but you got to get out the house and meet people doing and investing in the things that you want to invest in. So you need to meet a bunch of mobile home owners in South Florida and start picking their brain, start asking one of them to mentor you as you get into it and ask them questions. You know, 
Is this a good idea? What about that? How do you handle this? How do you handle that? Should I invest in this? What's the market look like? What do you start humbling yourself and take on a mentor who already has invested in mobile homes in South Florida for years and years and years and knows the business. And how do you do that? You join the local so associations in South Florida and start talking to people that invest in mobile homes in South Florida, in your area, in your region. Now, if you if you do that starting Monday, you and then you do that, you're all into it, you're learning, you're getting to know people, you're talking. Then in three months, you'll have a better answer to that question. You'll know the answer to it. But you can't, listen, you cannot do real estate online, okay? You can learn about it online, but you got to out there, you got to get out there and talk to people, have those conversations, shake some hands. When you go to a local landlord association in South Florida or a mobile home association or whatever, a, a meetup or whatever in South Florida, you're going to learn more when you go and meet people and sit down and talk to people, have conversations, then you're going to learn online, right? That's my suggestion. I hope that answered your question, Simno. Good question. Uh, let's see. Can you give an example of banks that offer high-yield savings accounts? Hey, good to have you in here, Lyle. Um, what I would do with online, online, there's a lot of different ones out there. What I would do is simple, simply Google them. And high-yield savings accounts are out there. And you... Every single month or every single week, actually every day, there's uh, you can go to bank rate or you can go to best money and they'll give you some of the high, some of the best. I say, listen, they say best, some of the highest yields. Right. But just because it has the highest yield that it's offering you highest uh, rate of return doesn't mean it's always the best for you. I would look at some of the top online banking accounts, online high yield savings account, and then choose, do your research and choose the one that you feel most comfortable with. Oftentimes, that's going to be one that you may have heard of, right? A SoFi or something like that. I want you to go out there and do your research on which ones that you think will fit your scenario and that you feel comfortable with when you look on the platform, right? Because I could give you a whole bunch of them, but... I want you to make sure you do the research to see which one actually fits what you feel comfortable with. Because I can name I can name a few of them, but you may have never heard of them, right? And so if you've never heard of them, you're going to be like, well, I'm not sure I like this and I want to trust my money to, you know, upgrade or whatever they may be, right? Uh, it could be. Uh, I think now you got Discover offers a high yield savings account. You have to figure out what works for you. So I would Google high, best high yield savings accounts. And I would do a comparison and then look at their platforms. And that's how I would make the decision. Good question. Thanks, Lyle. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for being here, Lyle. O'Brien, Marcus Goldman has a suite. Yeah, Marcus Goldman. You guys know what, why they call them Marcus accounts? <laughs> because the I think it was the grandfather of who was Marcus? Let me let me pull it up. I'm gonna tell you this because I, I read this a few weeks ago. Um Somebody's grandfather, Marcus, Goldman Sachs, Marcus. Uh, Marcus was the name of the founder of some, this is like in the 1800s. He was the, he was the grandfather of the founder of, I don't know it. Maybe you guys will know it, put it in the chat for me. But anyway, that's why they call it a Marcus account. But yeah, O'Brien threw out Marcus Goldman account. That's a, that's an HYSA for you. So something to think about. Somebody says, question, do mobile homes appreciate or depreciate? Well. That's a good question. Depends on a lot of things. Okay. Um, depends on the area, depends on the upkeep. But I've seen I've seen mobile home parks go down in value. I really have because of the the, the upkeep. Right? Just depends. I just reached 7K limit on my 2024 Roth. Congratulations, PS. Uh here, there's another one, uh, uh, Lyle. Somebody mentioned Capital One is paying 4.35 on a savings account, right? So they're they're out there, but you got to really figure out which one is best for you. You've heard of Capital One, and Capital One has a pretty good reputation. Some people don't like using online bank accounts because of they want to go down the street and touch their money, right? So that's why I say you want to go with the one that you feel comfortable with. 
Navy Federal is another one someone threw out there. Thanks, thanks, uh, Jarrett. Let's see here. Somebody said mobile homes are good investments. Yeah, could be. Could be. Somebody else, somebody also said mobile homes depreciate fast. This is why when you're talking about mobile homes, you need to, it's region specific. Because a mobile home in the West Virginia Hills may not be the same as a mobile home park um, in San Diego, right next to the beach. Right? You got to know your region. You got to know your area that you're investing in. Right? Somebody said, uh, said, how can you invest in real estate when everything is overpriced and interest rates are 8%? I don't know that everything is overpriced in terms of real estate at this point. Maybe. When you talk about real estate, big words like everything don't really apply because real estate is different in different parts of the country here in America, right? What I can buy with my 10, what I can buy, listen, what I can buy with $10,000 in real estate, <laughs> right, in, uh, in uh, Mississippi is different than what I can get with $10,000 in South Florida on the beach, right? So we got to think in terms of regions when we talk real estate quite a bit, guys. Um, and then I always say with real estate, somebody says, why would you buy real estate right now? This is my take on real estate. You need to buy real estate when you're ready to buy real estate. Buy it when you're ready. Especially when we're talking about a home, a personal primary home. You buy that personal primary home when you're ready to buy real estate, right? That's my suggestion. Let's see here. Uh, I would not touch real estate. It's going to crash. Listen, it may crash. We've heard that. We've, we've seen some you know scenarios where it may crash, right? But how about... You get ready to buy real estate just in case it does crash, right? Or, or buy uh, rental real estate or some type of investment real estate. Let's see. Miss V said, I will only buy a tiny home to put on the home, put on the home I own, right? Since it's friendly in my state where you can add a tiny home to the, the land on your own home. I guess she's talking about. However, there's a lot of regulations and permits. Yeah, that's new right now. Buying a tiny home, putting it on the land that you currently own. There's a, there's a term for that, and it's skipping my mind right now. If somebody knows the term for that, let me know. Uh, Zach said, REITs, Real Estate Investment tr tr Trust, uh, buy shares like stocks. Yep, Marcus High Yield Savings Account online. Yes, yeah, see, we got some super-duper smart, intelligent investors in this group, guys, in this community. And I appreciate you guys sharing good information in the chat because a lot of people learn from the chat. My man, Dino. What's up, man? Dino is in the house. What's going on, Dino? <laughs> Dino's an old, old friend from what, Dino? Tell me. Uh, fourth grade, fifth grade? Long time, long time, buddy of mine. Dino, good to have you in here, man. We got to catch up. I appreciate you being here, Dino. I appreciate you as a person, man. And I look forward to us getting back together. What, Dino said, what's your position on cryptocurrency? Here's my position on cryptocurrency. Only invest a little bit of your money in crypto if you know crypto. Only invest a tiny bit of your money in crypto if you know crypto. Again, you got to know it. If you don't understand what Ethereum is all about, if you don't know what Litecoin is or you don't know what uh, uh, Bitcoin is, you shouldn't be investing in something you don't know about. Learn a little bit about it. Invest a tiny, tiny percentage. Right now, I got a pretty I got a pretty nice net worth. And I only have I have less than a thousand dollars. I think it I haven't even checked my account in, in a month. I, I got less than a thousand dollars in cryptocurrencies. I don't invest in them. I'm not I'm not a big investor in cryptos. I don't suggest you put a large 25, 30% of your money into cryptocurrencies. I don't suggest that. Okay. I'm just not the guy that does that, guys. And there's a lot of people out there that disagree with me on cryptocurrency. Crypto is the future. That's cool if that's what you believe. Again, personal finance is personal. If you feel super comfortable and you want to put 20% of your money into crypto, feel free. I'm not going to talk you down off that mountain. And I, and, and I know I won't talk you down off that mountain, but I can tell you what I invested in to get to where I'm at. And that's really what I stress right, on this channel. I don't stress 
the new, and I say new, crypto's 15 years old, not so new, but it's fairly new in the big picture of money, right? I suggest you do your homework, study, 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 learn, 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 and then even after you do all that, only invest a tiny, a tiny uh, portion of your money in crypto. It's just too new. It's just too unregulated, right, at this point. So, somebody said, sit bank and bread bank at bread bank are good ones. Good high yield savings account. Thanks for adding that to the chat. Appreciate that. PCZ730. Uh, let's see here. Question. I'm 19 year old sophomore from Seattle, Washington. Thanks for being here. I'm next. Good to have you in here. And I'm struggling with college right now with a computer engineering major. I really like finance and accounting. Should I pursue a major in these areas? If you really like finance and accounting, yes. If you really don't, if you're not really big on, on computer engineering, let me let me tell you something about that. Glad you're here, by the way, and thanks for that question. I'm next. Let me answer it for you. Let me help you out. You need to get a high sk high paying skill. Finance and accounting are good, solid, high paying skills for the most part, right? If you really enjoy and love and like finance and accounting, go ahead and switch your majors early into finance and accounting, right? You can, if you really love, if you really like, or you think you might want to do something with computers, you can always go and get a side certificate on some type, something having to do with computers, software development, cybersecurity. You can always do that on the side, but to have a finance and accounting degree with a side hustle or a side uh, certification in computer science somewhere, somewhere in the computer sciences. You've made yourself incredibly in, uh, valuable to the marketplace. So I love where your head is at. I'm next. I love where your head is at. You're doing the right thing by looking at these high paying skills off the rip, right? From the beginning at 19 years old. Congratulations and kudos to you. Special shout out, shout out to you for being wise, right? But yes, I would go ahead and look into finance and accounting. Before you spend too much money going the wrong direction in, in college, go ahead and change as quick as you can. Monday, Tuesday, have a conversation with your advisor at the college and go ahead and say, what do I have to do to, to move over to finance and accounting? Because I really, really love those things. And you can combine finance and accounting with cybersecurity or with computer technology or with computer engineering. You can combine all of it, right? But don't struggle too hard in computer engineering, which is a great degree as well. Nothing wrong with any of the majors that you put out there, but do what you think you may want to be doing in five and 10 years. And if you're in this chat, like you are, I'm assuming that you really enjoy finance and accounting. And I would say, if that's what you really love to do, and you think you can see yourself doing that in 20 years from now, thinking long-term again, then do that. And if you still want to do something on the side in terms of get some type of computer, some data analysis or some web development or some computer engineering, some software, you can always get a one year certificate in that stuff and do it on the side if you enjoy it. Right. So excellent question. I'm next. Guys, give I'm next some encouragement, some motivation as a young person in the chat. Good to have you. I'm glad you're here. So. Lyle, I hope that we were able to answer your question about the high yield savings account. We gave a bunch of examples in here, so I hope, hope that helped you out. Uh, let's see. How about WeBull? WeBull is cool, too. Let's see here. I'd recommend Lending Club and Wealthfront. There's some, there's some more uh, suggestions. Thanks so much for adding that. What's my position on commercial real estate? Dino, thanks for that question. Commercial real estate. Commercial real estate, guys, is... If you have an extra $10,000 and you're in scenario three where you could you just have that money to spend and chill, maybe you can couple that and leverage that with some more of your money and see if you can get into, into some commercial real estate. Commercial real estate is an excellent investment most times. Now, I say it's excellent, but just remember that, you know, you, got, you still got to have a tenant when you do commercial real estate. And the rules for commercial real estate are a little bit different than with, um, you know, regular single family homes, right? You know, the, the terms are not 30 year terms and things like that and, and all that good stuff. The terms are shorter. And right now, if you do a little bit of research, guys, on the Internet, you'll see that there's going to be a real estate, a commercial real estate conundrum coming up. There's going to be a, a commercial real estate. At the crosshairs, because what's going to happen in commercial real estate is there's tr a trillion dollars coming due. And many of the loan holders, I'm sorry, many of the investors don't have the money to renew. 
I think there's going to be a big sale on commercial real estate in the next year or two. Be looking for that. I'm cool with commercial real estate, but make sure you have a plan for the commercial real estate because it may be sitting empty right now, but you don't want to get it and have to pay for it and have it sitting empty as well. So what is the plan? One thing I always suggest people do, and, and let me just share this with you guys. I'm a, I'm a planning and zoning commissioner in the city that I live in. I'm a planning and zoning commissioner, which means that we look at all different types of things. Con con conditional use permits, we encode the city laws and the city codes and statutes that regulate building and not building and all that good stuff. Anyway, without going too deep down that rabbit hole, I always suggest that when you want to invest in commercial real estate specifically, you need to know everything possible about that area, about the future use of the area, what is the city's roadmap for how they plan to utilize that area that that commercial real estate's in, what is the, the statutes and laws governing what you can and can't do in and on and around that commercial real estate area, what's coming to the area, what's left the area, why did it leave the area, why is new stuff coming to the area, why is this a blighted piece of commercial real estate, why is it not a, why is the, why did, why did the, the Wendy's next door just move and then the uh, Chick-fil-A right there just move and then the, the, the McDonald's across the street, they move. Why is everybody leaving the area where you want to buy the commercial real estate? You got to know all these things, right? And you also want to know what does it take to actually have somebody else come in and buy the land across the street? To You want to know the laws and rules of the places where you're buying the commercial real estate. Don't just buy commercial real estate willy-nilly because it looks like a nice place that you drive past every day. What's happening? How can you make money from that commercial real estate, right? How can you turn over? What can you improve? What is the location? What is the schools like in the area near? How many people drive? Look at the look at the studies that show if the if your city has done studies that show how many people drive by that area every day, right? How is there a new turnpike or uh, coming around the corner that's going to divert traffic away from your commercial real estate? Lots of things to listen. I like commercial real estate, but you got to do your research on commercial real estate, right? Do your research. I hope that helped you out, Dino. Appreciate it. Let's see. No day trading, please. Mother-in-law home in the backyard. Miss Reynolds, that's cool. Fundrise uh, is a great real estate crowdfunding per platform. Personally use them, O'Brien. Fantastic. Thanks for adding them to the chat. Um, RC, my pleasure. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said, I don't trust crypto. Yeah. So listen, guys, here's my deal. Let's see if I got any more questions, 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 questions. I'm looking for the cue. Uh, OK, here's my deal. On this video, I wanted to have a conversation about what I would do with ten thousand dollars. All of your suggestions in the chat. If you're if you're watching this on the replay, look at the chat. There's a lot of good information in this chat. And that's the thing. That's the beauty. I, I really like sharing and coming on here on Saturdays because you guys really have a ton of great information to add to the to the conversation. Here's the deal. I don't know everything. I really don't. I rely on, you know, you guys to help me understand some things as well. But that's what I would do. The three scenarios that I would do with ten thousand dollars. Scenario one, scenario two and scenario three. If I had $10,000 today, right now, all right, we've been on here a while. I'm going to end it. That's a good segue. Man, I got these overactive tear ducts. Forgive me. Hey, big shout out to all of you that decided to come on here and hang out with me, guys. I appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it so much. Dino, Lyle, Zombies, Miss Reynolds, Frank Ellis, um, I'm next. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. I'm next. Feel free to come on here again and ask questions. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel, right? If you haven't hit the, the thumbs up or the like button, smash it for me real quick. Just tap it for me, all right? I appreciate it more than you know, guys. Please, if you want, share the link to this video with someone that you know who may say who may have run into $10,000 or may have an opportunity to get $10,000. Share it with them for me. I really, really would appreciate it. Thank you so much if you're looking in from LinkedIn. Thank you so much if you're looking in from Twitter X. Thank you so much if you're on IG. Thank you for checking on. Check it in if you're on the in the Facebook group, The Remnant. I appreciate you guys being here. And I and on Saturdays, we have these frank, open, 
honest talks about money, right? Just wanted to give you guys some things to think about. I hope I helped you guys out today. I hope this was helpful for some of you that may be in one, find yourself with in one of these scenarios. Um, that's what I do with $10,000 today, right now. Hey, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to come back on here tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. I've got something else I want to share with you. I think it's pretty important. Hit that like button. Check out the description box. My partner's down there, Mint Mobile, in the description box on YouTube. Check them out as well if you want to get premium wireless service for less money. All right? Also, don't forget, 24 Laws of Money in the description box as well. Check that out. You can follow me on all the different social medias. You check anywhere. I'm smart money, bro, wherever you go. All right? Appreciate it. Yes, the best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.